We have some crazy new things happening on the homestead and we are going to talk about them in this video. So stay tuned. We have a lot to talk about. Oh, by the way, stay tuned after I talk about the coop because we're going to talk about what we're bringing to the homestead this year. So if you've been following our journey any amount of time, you know that our main goal has been to grow our own food no matter where we are. And we're currently living on a half acre in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. And you can do a lot on a half acre, you really can. But recently we were able to acquire some land and we are building a brand new homestead on that property. And so even though our home build is kind of on halt right now, we can build up our actual homestead, which is exactly what we're doing with these new additions that we got. Now, if this is your first time here, let me introduce myself. My name is Amy Fuel. I am the author and blogger over at thefuelhomestead.com. I'm also the founder of Homesteaders of America, and we have been homesteading for uh, probably about a decade, I would say. Um, we have a great history. You can actually check out my podcast and it talks about our, our journey into homesteading. Uh, the podcast is called Choosing Simple. We talk about choosing simple and your everyday average life, but this was less than simple. <laughs> and that's what I want to talk to you about today. This is actually, these are two pasture ranging systems. They are not connected. They are two separate systems. As you can see, this one has the tarp. This one does not. This actually isn't even on the way it's supposed to be. Um, I just put it on there to see how it fit and see how it worked. And um, it, it's gonna do a great job once we figure it out. But um, these two systems behind me are built for ranging chickens. Um, so they are pasture ranging systems that you can use even on something as small as a half acre. Um, but we will put these on the other property. Now, we do have plans for them here right now. Our meat birds are coming in the next couple of weeks and we will be placing them in here as a brooder setup here at our current house. And then we will be moving these once they get a little bit bigger for us to not have to manage constantly over to the new property. Now, since the new property isn't very far from us, we can just stick it on a trailer and kind of wing it. Um, but these were not near us when we had to go pick them up. So I'm gonna tell you the story about it real quick and give you a tour of them. One of the things I always like to tell people is to not be afraid to barter. Help if I took the thing the right way. Don't ever be afraid to barter because you're gonna get some incredible things when you barter. We bartered for these two chicken tractors. Um, could we have made them on our own? Absolutely, we could have. My husband is a very talented, um, skilled man, but we do not have the time to do it. With all the springtime stuff, our time is spent right now built, uh, putting in our garden. And besides that, even with the virus going on, my husband's work is still very, very, very busy. My husband and I are both entrepreneurs, meaning we're both self-employed, we have our own businesses, and time is not something that either one of us have a lot of right now. Um, he is busy away from the home all day, every day, mo most days at least. Um, I am busy at home being a homemaker and doing my businesses as well. Um, obviously, I'm do, I do YouTube. I have a website that I have to manage that's starting to make money now. Um, I do Homesteaders of America conference and organization and various writing jobs for magazines like Backyard Poultry and um, the Community Chickens website, different things like that. So we have a lot going on. Add in being a mom and a wife uh, and just living life in general, having to homestead doing your garden taking care of your animals and we're literally homesteading brand new we're turning decades worth of beautiful cow pasture with grass this you know this thick with roots this deep you know you can't even see how deep they go into a garden and so um, we don't have a lot of time so the beauty of homesteading is that most homesteaders 
really enjoy bartering. Uh, and that's what we did for these two chicken tractors. We partnered with AJ Farms uh, on YouTube. It's Homestead Evolution is their YouTube channel. So please go check them out. They're amazing, wonderful people. We love them to death. They're always at the Homesteaders of America conference. They are our quail people. If you want to know anything, everything about raising quail, they are the people to, to check out. Um, but John and Anita did a great job at building these. Now they use the John Suskovich um, template, which you can buy online. I'm gonna link it below. But do subscribe to their Homestead Evolution channel because I think that John is going to actually um, put his own plans out. He modified this coop really well and I wanna show you how he did it. Um, maybe not all of it in case <laughs> in case he does put the plans out but um i will just show you the basics of how he helped reinforce it to make it a better chicken tractor um but anyhow if you don't have time to do something or you can't do something there is always a homesteader nearby or somewhere in in your state that can probably do it or even if they're not a homesteader even just a business or a service so Anita and I were talking and we traded services for services, which was a really great opportunity for us to help us out. Really, it, it's really helping us out. Especially in times like these when we are trying really hard to grow our own food and not a lot of time on our hands to do things like this, which help us grow our own food. All right, so here are some ways that John helped reinforce it. In the beginning, this chicken tractor didn't have this. He reinforced all of the corners so that they weren't as flimsy, which was pretty incredible. He zip tied on the chicken wire, which I don't even know if that was in the original plan or not, but he did a really great job. He gave us these chicken feeders as part of the, um, the deal, and it's great because they have these hooks that he already put on it with chains and we can raise it uh, as the chickens grow or we can lower it um, as they are little. And then there were some other odd and end things like you can see this one by one out here is covering the chicken wire uh, because he, they just, they used it, they had the experience in using it and they took the tractor and they made it better. Um, and there's some other things that they did that we really enjoy about this coop. And so we know that they're probably gonna put their own plans out I mean even right down to the details of of this you know we it's just it's a really solid coop a lot of people you know have asked is it really heavy it's it's really not it's really not heavy um <clears throat> the other part is that they had I know he remember saying they had a, a lock on there that he didn't like but this one is great because you can just close it and then you can put a, a lock on there at night, which we'll probably do because they won't be on our property currently. And then as you saw, we have, ouch, this. Uh, this is what we pull the coop with. Uh, and he made it really simple for us with these hooks. And I'm so glad he did that because that's gonna be a lifesaver for me. Now, a lot of people will question, is this efficient? Can you move it? Is it easy to move? It is, it's easy for me to move might not be easy for your 10 year old to move uh, without a little bit of help 10 year old has a little bit of problem with it um, but he reinforced everything and to me that's more important I can move it my husband can move it my 10 year old can move it with a little bit of help um, but they're sturdy and that's what matters to me so enough about the chicken coops because I'm gonna let AJ Farms and Homestead Evolution tell you more about that um, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about what we're planning on bringing to the homestead this year all right so I'm gonna get on the McMurray McMurray <sighs> the Murray McMurray hatchery website I want to show you guys what we're bringing to the homestead this year um, not just chickens we uh, we actually I have a video that I'm working on for geese you guys see this on Instagram oh my goodness I found the cutest bay leaf trees at our local nursery and I just had to pick it up it was so adorable he's gonna sit here and keep me company 
All right, so the first thing that we added a few weeks ago, which I'm super excited about, let me show you. All right, the first thing we added, this was a few weeks ago, almost a month now, were our brown Chinese geese. They are so, so cool, so pretty. I knew I wanted to add geese to the home set. They have white options too, we got the brown ones. Um, they are great guardians, really great guardians for the homestead, so we did add those. The next thing we added were the blue Swedish duck right here, which are just great egg laying ducks. And then we also added blue runner ducks because let's just face it, runner ducks are so super cool and they're really funny. Now McMurray Hatchery has an entire list of meat birds you can get. So in just a couple weeks, we are getting ready to welcome the Murray's Big Red Broiler. Now these birds do forage better than the Cornish Cross that you would normally get. They do take a few more weeks than the Cornish Cross, but we're getting those. And then we're also getting the Jumbo Cornish Cross. Um, I don't really like these birds very much. They're ugly, they stink, they don't have a very good mortality rate, but they do grow fast and they are good growers. They grow in about eight weeks. Um, and so we are gonna be adding these as well in the next couple of weeks. Now we've gotten a lot of questions about whether we're adding goats this year. We're not adding goats to the property until we actually move to the property. Uh, we thought that would be really smart because while my in-laws do live there, they live right next to the property of ours, um, it's not really their responsibility to keep up with our goats. <laughs> so I am planning on adding goats. Hopefully next spring um, we'll be in a house or almost in the house and we can add goats to the property. But for now we're adding other things that are non-livestock related. Um, our garden, as you can see in one of our past videos, is growing to about 100 to 120 feet in width and then it's about 30 or 40 feet um, depth or I guess it's 100, 100 between 120 feet wide long I don't know but it's a big garden and um, we have a lot of plants still outside it is not quite May yet at the making of this video but I think I'm gonna go ahead and plant everything our 14 day outlook is like none of the temperatures are dipping below 40 degrees at night um tomatoes typically don't like it to dip below 50 but i my tomatoes have been outside in 40 degree weather for the last few weeks and so they've been just just fine now there are some other things uh there are some other chickens that we did add to uh our chicken regime this year um, but our goal is to grow our own in every way so we have our brand new egg layer chicks that are going to be ready to start laying by fall um, we do have some layers that are laying right now. We're getting about half a dozen a day, which is fine. Um, but some weeks we can go through more than a half a dozen a day. Um, we also, so out of that batch, we have um, cream leg bars. We have Americanas and I think we have white and true green and white and true blue. Uh, all of those are from McMurray Hatchery. They are beautiful and they, they are gonna lay some really pretty eggs. Um, but, so our plan with the meat birds, uh, we are going to have two batches come in May, and then I'm probably going to do two more batches in July. Um, the reason for that is because we want to space them out. We don't want to have all of the birds ready to process at one time because it can take quite a while to process those birds. Um, and so we're spacing the time out so that we're only we're only butchering like 25 to 50 at a time. So the Cornish Cross are gonna come, they're gonna be ready to butcher in eight weeks. And four weeks, eight, not yeah, four weeks after that, we'll butcher the red red broilers. And then the, that week, that same week, our new batch of broilers will come. So it'll just be this continued rotation where we're not having to do all the birds at one time. It can be very tiring and uh, especially if you don't, have a lot of help uh, so that's our goal this year so our freezer will currently be full of lots of chicken it's already full with a pig we're probably going to get another pig from my um sister-in-law and brother-in-law they raise pigs and so um probably gonna get another one because we eat a lot of pig my husband can't eat beef so we don't go do beef so we do a lot of chicken and pork and venison I don't think my husband's gonna do a lot of hunting this year he really didn't do any last year um, with the deer wasting disease and all that stuff it's just not really something we want to fool with this year so chicken and pork 
and fish will be our pretty big main source of protein for us. So we're just trying to get everything filled up before winter comes. Now, as you might know, there is the scare of a meat shortage coming. Um, with the virus, there's a lot of chicken plants closing down, processing plants. There are a lot of pork plants that are closing down. If you don't know, Smithfield, which is the company that's closing down all of the pig processing plants is actually owned by China. Um, Smithfield is very big in Virginia, which is where I live. We knew a few years ago that they sold out to China and their investors are all um, from there. So we've been processing and shipping out meat, uh, importing, exporting, all that stuff for a few years now. And it's just not safe, it's not healthy. It's really important that you grow your own food. Um, we have become so dependent on a food system that is completely and totally broken. And I know this might be a little harsh for some people and it might ruffle some feathers and my subscriber count is probably going to go way down. But just so you're aware, in case you weren't aware, it's not the government's job to take care of you. It's your job to take care of you. And so now more than ever, we are encouraging people to grow their own food. Um, grow your own meat. If you can't grow your own meat, grow your own vegetables. If you can't grow your own vegetables, find a way to do it. Go to a community garden, whatever it takes. Um, you can figure out all of this stuff in the Grow Your Own Food series that we did on the Homesteaders of America YouTube channel a few weeks back. We are expanding that series into a garden tour series starting in May through December. So you can kind of see what a garden looks like in different areas every, every month. Um, and we'll have different garden tours every week of that month. We are also personally working on a garden tour uh, and a market garden in here in Virginia and then a garden center here in Virginia. Um, that'll probably be sometime in or May or June. Uh, that will also be on the Homesteaders of America channel. In the meantime, if you don't think you can afford to homestead or you don't think you are able to, check out the Grow Your Own Food series on the HOA um, YouTube channel. And I also have a new podcast titled The Biggest Lie I Can't Afford to Homestead. Um, that is on my podcast. It's called The Choosing Simple Podcast. You can find it across any podcast service um, <clears throat> most of the time. Otherwise, you can go to my website and listen to it. It's completely free. Uh, and it kind of gives you some insight into maybe why you might think you can't afford it and that you probably actually can afford it. So, all right, guys, I have my other hat to put on today, which is getting the house clean and getting laundry done. And I think I'm going to throw a chicken in the oven for dinner. And loving on my little babe plate. Isn't that cute? Uh, and I have some tr tomatoes to transplant too. So, don't forget, check out Homestead Evolution on YouTube. They are doing awesome things over there on their homestead. They're actually here in Virginia as well. Uh, we really love partnering with them and connecting with them. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. We have a lot of, lot of videos coming out. Let's see, I've already recorded like five videos. I haven't had time to edit it yet. One of them is making bacon, which was pretty fun. Can't wait to share that one with you. Um, and that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget how important it is to grow your own food and have a great day. Happy homesteading.